Goran Dragic is the bell of the ball this week as everyone's favorite free agent. The recently bought out Slovenian all-star has been rumored to be in contact with at least six contending teams according to Woj. We have gotten together a list of all potential candidates, some a little more viable than others. But let us waste no more time and let's dive right in and see where the dragon will be playing next week. Let's start with the team that was the front runner for Goron's services as little as two weeks ago, the Dallas Mavericks. Now, the big factor here with Dallas is, of course, Luka Doncic. For those of you who don't remember, this dynamic duo of Dragic and Doncic dominated the 2017 FIBA Eurobasket Championship, a tournament that Dragic was named MVP. Equally important, they have the same agent, they have other connections in Dallas. You know what, let's just let someone who's a little closer to that situation fill us in, huh? But know this, when Lucas signed his $200 million contract in Slovenia with all the Mavericks brass there, Dragic was there too. He's known Lucas since Lucas was like eight years old. The Mavericks offensive coordinator, Igor Kosvikov. He's he was Goran Dragic's uh, national head coach too for Slovenia when they were playing together. So they all know each other. And they have the same agent, Bill Duffy, who also represented Steve Nash and, like I said, been around forever. So it was almost like ever since last summer, when he said it, Dragic said, I want to end my career playing with Luca." But the whole deal was Toronto was holding him hostage on the contract. He's like, but I'm going to tell you this, because I've known Goran Dragic since he played for the Rockets, but like over 12 years. He's always wanted to play for the Mavericks. He told me then he wanted to play for the Mavericks because Steve Nash played for the Mavericks. And of course, Duffy represented Nash too. He idolized Steve Nash. Now, with all that being said, I just don't think this works on the court for either side. I believe Goran wants to end his career playing with Luka, but would he be willing to end it watching Luka from the sideline? Now, it's possible. I can't rule it out completely, but given the fact that the Mavericks just traded KP over to the Wizards for Davis Bertrands and Spencer Dinwiddie, there's not really much room in this backcourt for Dragic to get meaningful playing time. And while we can discuss whether or not that trade was a good idea for Dallas some other time, for now, we should probably rule them out as a real candidate to land Dragic in the next week. Moving right along to the next stop in the express lane before we get to some more legitimate candidates that's right folks it is time for our obligatory brooklyn nets buyout rumor segment so the brooklyn nets have of course been mentioned by woge and others as a potential landing spot for Dragic. and at this point as is this channel stance you should be mentioning the brooklyn nets in any potential buyout rumor for your conversations at home because hey everyone else is uh, realistically here though I don't I don't see how this one works uh, Drogic well, let me just say it would probably be a valuable addition to every team that we're going to discuss in this video so let me just say that before someone tries to tell me I'm an idiot and saying that Drogic wouldn't add value to the situation I understand that he would but this is a two-way street here. Both sides have to be in on this deal. And while the Nets could absolutely use a little shot in the arm from uh, Drogic offensively, I really don't know that the personalities would work here. We already have Kyrie. We have Ben Simmons coming into the situation. Still not sure exactly how that's going to play out and how well he'll mesh with his teammates. And now we're going to bring in Drogic, who also has had some personal issues off the court that kept him well off the court for all but five games this year i i just don't know that this would be a, a great mesh and i think there are better options for goron so let's just push right through and get to some of those next up we have the golden state warriors who of course are pretty set at the point guard uh, would Drogic be a valuable addition as a backup in lieu of, say, Gary Payton II? 
Uh, Dubs fans seem to think so. Um, he would be the best backup option, uh, or at least better than any of their current backup options, according to Warriors Today by Chat Sports. Uh, also, Chat Sports talked about some lineup versatility and, of course, pointed out a, what it should be obvious for all of us that uh, this would be a great opportunity for Draja to pick up a ring. But again, as previously stated, I, I do get the impression that playing time is equally important to Drogic in this moment. I don't think he is ready to pull a Robert Ori, if you will. How dare you? All right, everyone calm down, okay? He's still a champion, but Drogic wants to contribute to a championship roster rather than just be sort of along for the ride. The Raptors trading Drogic to the Spurs prior to the deadline has given us one other option here that would not have been possible if the Raptors had just bought Goron out himself. Due to the Spurs acquiring Drogic, the Miami Heat are now once again eligible to sign Goron. In a move that would certainly make Heat fans very happy uh, I'm sure they have plenty of nostalgia for this guy, even though he hasn't been gone for that long. However, this is another one, much like the Mavericks, that sounds better on paper than it would play out on the court, in my opinion. I really just don't think there's a need here in Miami. While it would be great for Goran, I'm sure, uh, considering whatever he's been working through throughout the season and the fact that he has been working out in Miami was just recently seen at a Mavs Heat game and I think we can all agree that if it were just a matter of uh, making a heartfelt decision all things being equal he'd probably be playing for one of those two teams but as we have continued to say and hopefully I won't repeat myself too much Goran wants to play here, and I don't think there's much of a reason to add him. Yes, he could probably be an improvement to Gabe Vincent, but when you look at the numbers, I just don't think it's a big enough improvement. We're talking about maybe an extra four points a game and about the same assist, assist numbers, and that's giving Goran a little bit of credit. That's using his 2020, 2021 numbers with Miami because I, I don't, I, five games in Toronto, what are the, those averages don't tell me much, but okay, if, if you want to use this year's averages, it's only eight points a game for Goran. So, I, I mean, then it's a wash. It's a complete wash if those are the stats you want to use. So again, just enough for me to say once again that there are better options here if the goal is to play while also having a chance to win. So let's let's move along. Well, 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 would you look at that, folks? It is time for round two of our obligatory buyout rumor segment starring everyone's favorite or second favorite buyout darling, LeBron and the Los Angeles Lakers, who have also been heavily rumored by one Woj. Lakers here, I mean, I get it, right, guys? This is one of those um, it's not you, it's me kind of situations. It, it make no mistake that the Lakers could use Drogic's services, which is an easy thing for me to say. However, with all the headaches going on, why in the world would this man want to go and play for the Lakers? At this point, I've heard people say, people such as Jalen Rose, he may know what he's talking about, that Drogic would usurp Russell Westbrook as the starter in LA, which would make sense based on what we've seen. I wouldn't argue against that either. However, I think that's just going to create a lot of problems as well. And the poor Russ, man, I, oof, the struggle is real, but it just would... I feel for him. I don't think he's being a, a bad teammate. He seems to be doing his best to try to keep his spirits up but my god this would be just devastating to him and I don't know that it would be enough to make any significant difference in LA and what I mean by that is will the addition of Goran Dragic 
make the Lakers an actual threat to win the championship this year? No, because doing this does not somehow turn back the clock and get Russ to be the Russ that you were hoping to get when you made that acquisition. So Drogic is not walking through that door coming to deliver 20 and 7 and he's going to put you on his back and, and carry you. If what LeBron has done this year isn't going to be able to carry these play in Lakers, then sorry, there, there's no point to it then. So on to the next more viable option. From the play-in Lakers to the play-in Clippers. Now, this team surprised me a little bit when I saw them on this list. I think this move makes a little more sense to the Clippers next season, potentially, when they get their two stars back and are likely to actually have a shot at a title. But hey, they made that move to get Norman Powell. They've got Rob Covington still on the squad. Uh, this is uh, with the way Reggie Jackson has played. I mean, this this is a playoff team, right? They're the play-in Clippers, but they're setting themselves up for a potential first-round matchup with the Suns or the Dubs. So sure, they could use Drogic's help. But I, again, for his wants and needs, I do not believe the Clippers are an ideal matchup for him this season. Now, if we end up running this back and he is in a similar situation next year, I think the Clippers will be towards the top of that list. But for now, next, we are in the home stretch now as we approach the two teams that I believe have the best odds of landing Drogic. And let's start with the Chicago Bulls. The Bulls recently added Tristan Thompson to shore up their front court. But the injuries to Alonzo Ball and Alex Caruso actually make them a front runner for Drogic as well because they could use some guard play in the meantime. Uh, Ball appears to be trending towards a late March return, so Drogic could help keep the Bulls on pace in the meantime. And head coach Billy Donovan has been known to play some smaller lineups in the past. So if there were a team that could utilize Drogic with a versatile lineup once Ball does come back, I'd say the Bulls are a good candidate. If you've been following along, then you already know who my favorite is. But let's go ahead and talk about it. The Milwaukee Bucks. The defending champs have been mentioned in several buyout rumors since the deadline, but since they moved Dante DiVincenzo in a trade that helped them acquire Serge Ibaka, they have a bit of a need here going forward. So not only would this provide Drogic with a defending champion contender to play on, but it is also a contender that could actually use his skill set. And while it's true that, that these minutes may uh, shrink up a bit in the playoffs, uh, all rotations tend to shrivel, as it were, I still think the Bucks would have room for some valuable minutes for Drogic down the stretch. Pat Connaughton's going to be out for about another month as well. So this is very similar to the Bulls situation where there is an immediate need for more minutes with Drogic now. Maybe a lesser role in the playoffs, but I still think this one is significant enough with a, a, a real viable chance to win. Uh, I think when it's all said and done that this is where we're going to see Drogic land. It makes the most sense for both sides. It is the most or the closest to a win-win situation as we can get with all of the options that we've looked at. But but you tell me, what do you think? How wrong am I? Did I get it just way off this time? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Who are some other buyout candidates that have you excited? Do you think there are any other difference makers sitting there waiting to be added will your favorite team win it all this year i don't care what you've got to say just make sure you say it in the comments and i will see you next time